best new science fiction books of September 2023. We have a bummer crop of new sci-fi books for you this September, including Talking Spy Cats from John Scalzi, An Amazing Discovery in Space from Stephen Baxter, and a new future novel by future novel by Sebastian Fox, says culture editor Alison Flood. September will always feel like a time for new beginnings to me, regardless of the fact that I no longer need a new pencil case or any fresh pencils. Reading-wise, it's time to reset after the holiday novels of July and August. But before I do, if you didn't pick up two of the last month's recommendations, Lauren Becky's Bridge, our latest pick for the new scientist book club, or Daniel's Cross Wellful, about a boy trying to escape the belly of a sperm whale. They do, they are amazing. This month promises even more great reads, with new novels out from two of my favorites, Stephen Baxter and John Scuzzi, plus an intriguing sounding debut from MX Leo that re reimagines Hamlet as sci-fi, and new future speculative novels from Sebastian Fox, C. Pam Zhang, and Kalachi Okafor. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because um the content sounds kind of interesting but yeah to my 14th anniversary of the release of return of the jedi <coughs> this anthology sees three scenes from the movie created from the um droid to mon mothma so among the 40 writers and artists contributing we have olive blake giving a glimpse into the mind of imperial Palpatine, mary kenny telling the story of wicked the evil dreams of a quiet day on the forest moon of endo and most excitingly for me charlie jane anders looking into the, the terrifying month capping in the desert of tatooine Excuse me. Creation note by Steven Baxter. Steven Baxter is the author of one of my all-time favorite moments in a sci-fi novel. When the oceans close over to the top of Everest in flood, I think of this drowned earth relatively often. It is an image burned into my brain. His latest book sounds equally intriguing, and I will definitely be giving it a read. Set in 22, um, 2255, it follows the discovery of an object called Planet 9, which a woman named Selma spots from her space, a spaceship. Um, a spaceship. It's not a planet or the night of anything, it was briefly believed to be a black hole, but then it sends a message that there is something waiting for surface. Meanwhile, as Quasa has appeared and is heating up the solar system, lost to deal with, then. <coughs> Stider Villain by John Scalzi. This is the sort of sci-fi novel that needs to be described as a caper, I feel. It's set on Earth today and sees the divorce substitute teacher Charlie inherit his long, long lost paid late uncle Jake's super, super villain business, complete with island volcano lair. Unfortunately for Charlie, he also inherits his uncle's enemies. We are also promised intelligent, talking spy cats and an an union noise dolphins was not to like the seventh son by sebastian fox this is more speculative than straight sci-fi but fox is such a class act and the novel promises fertility experiments that will you you pan the human race as we know it so i think we can comfortably claim it for our roundup Baby said, the result of a series of secret IVF treatments masterminded by a billionaire entrepreneur, you've got to watch out for these guys, begins to attract attention when his differences of appearance, interests, and more start to show. I'm reading this now, and I'm absolutely engrossed. Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang. I adore Zhang's first novel, How Much of These Hills is Gold, set in the 19th century Old West. I highly, highly recommend it. Zhang is a phenomenal writer. Her second book moves the action to the new future, where food crops are disappearing and a smog is spreading. Hoping to escape her troubled reality, a chef takes a job in mountaintop colony for the global elite and discovers plans to reshape the world. 
the circumference of the world by Levi Tita. Tita is always excellent, and his latest comes highly recommended by <coughs> by Sadi Adi, our sci-fi columnist. It is a mathematician, a book dealer, and a mobster on the trail of a book that disappears once it is read, or does it? Only Zabu, a sci-fi writer, knows the truth. I love talking to Tita earlier this year for a new scientist about his dystopian film, Welcome to Your AI Future, which used the AI image generation program Miss Journey to tell the story of an AI trying to help the last surviving human, and I'm looking forward to this new novel. The Death I Gave Him by M. Max Liu. This novel I made at Rimmage's reimagines Shakespeare's Hamlet as a queer sci-fi locked room thriller. I mean, whatever not. It sees Hayden Litchfield out to avenge the death of his father, who has been murdered in a lab while they were developing the Sivis's formula, which might one day reverse death itself. When the lab is put on lockdown, Hayden is trapped with four other people, one of whom must be the killer. His only ally is Horatio, the lab's AI. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. Edge of Here by Kalachi Okafor. What a treat this sounds, a speculative short story collection. To dip into it this busiest of months, Okafor, who is host of the Say Your Mind podcast, sat down to explore contemporary black womanhood, but sets her stories in a black mural, its version of the near future. There's one in which you can experience someone else, someone else's emotions through a trip in your brain, one where you can view bits of distant relatives' life with help from your DNA, one where you can explore an alternative love life with a stranger. The Factor Dark by Megan E. Corfi. This is the second in the Devoured World series, which I can't believe I haven't sampled on before, as a space opera with dying planets, dangerous conspiracies, and secret romances sounds right up my street. I'm going to start with the first in the series, The Blight of Stars, which comes garlanded with praise from wider Connie Willis, who calls it a riveting adventure at a rocketing pace. This latest sees Nera and Tarquin out to discover more about the blight that has been killing habitable planets and digging into the Makurdo family secrets. Then the head of Makurdo disappears with the universe's remaining supply of starship fuel. This is how we end things by R.J. Jacobs. It isn't really sci-fi, but it's science and it's fiction and it's a thriller, and I love the sound of it, so I'm banging on some of you also being keen. We start with a group of graduate students who are studying the psychology of lying. This is a crime novel, so all of them have nothing to hide, have something to hide, and one of them winds up dead after an experiment. Oh, and they're also trapped on the abandoned campus by a snowstorm. Oh, so I think this is one, this one definitely fits my moods. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it. Thank you so much.